as we explore the land of the Bible. It was on a road like this that Jesus carried his cross. Archaeology is proving the accuracy of the Bible. Standing next to what is called the Rolling Stone Tomb above Jerusalem's Jaffa Park, I can't help but wonder what it was like that long ago Easter when Mary Magdalene found Jesus' empty tomb. Now this is not that tomb, but the one she visited was probably similar to this. Imagine the questions Mary Magdalene had. Imagine the fear. But all of her questions were answered when the risen Christ met her in the garden and called her by name, then told her to go tell the disciples that He was alive. But being a woman, well, her testimony held little weight in the eyes of most men. And so John and Peter ran to the tomb to find out what had happened for themselves. And you know what? You and I need to investigate this claim of resurrection as well. For everything hinges on whether Jesus' tomb was empty or not. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, If Christ has not been raised from the dead, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Well, I'm glad to report that there are many, many reasons why we can be assured that the tomb was not only empty, but that Jesus rose from the dead. And I'm excited to talk more about that today with Amy Turnage, one of the directors at the Center of Holy Land Studies. I just love what Jesus has done for us. You know, He drank the cup at Gethsemane. He embraced the cross at Calvary. But then He also, He also left an empty tomb as a sign for what He wants to do in our lives. And I, I just wanted to talk to you today a little bit about the controversy that surrounds the empty tomb because there's a lot of people who says, ah, it didn't happen. You know, they can't deny Jesus. There's too much historical fact. And so they especially love to attack the resurrection story. What are some of the things that they say about that empty tomb? So some may say that the body was stolen mm. or that they opened the wrong tomb. <laughs> the religious people would have seen that. Right, they could have taken him to the right tomb. And I've heard the argument about the stolen body, but I'm assuming they think that it was the disciples who did it, but they were the ones who ran away. Yes. I, they, they abandoned Jesus in Gethsemane, so why would they have gone and stole it? I mean, there were Roman guards, mm -hmm. plus there was a Roman seal, and I, I've read that if that Roman seal was broken by anyone that was not given authority, they would be put to death. I mean, it doesn't make Absolutely. sense that they would steal the body. But to me, the biggest argument against that is, why would you steal a body and try to prop up a lie mm -hmm. when the man that you're worshiping is obviously dead? Right. No, I, it doesn't make sense that they would steal the body. There's no good reason. No, and if Jesus uh, did not raise from the dead, they wouldn't have been martyred or died for that. That's they it. would do that for Jesus who did raise from the dead. Exactly. So. Exactly. The second reason we have to believe there is an empty tomb is the folded grave clothes ah. that were laying there when they came back and found Jesus. You're right. Because if it would have been a robbery, they wouldn't have taken time to fold clothes. I don't know of a robber in history that would have taken time to fold clothes if they were trying to steal <laughs> something or a body. So Jesus picked up after himself. He did. <laughs> His mother taught him. That's right. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, another, another thing that I think is important to remember is that 1 Corinthians 15, 6 tells us that over 500 people saw Jesus after his resurrection yes. because he stuck around for 40 days. I mean, he walked the streets. He appeared to his disciples and he disappeared to the man on Emmaus. Mm -hmm. He appeared to a lot of people. So it wasn't just a story no. made up by a handful. There were hundreds of eyewitnesses to the resurrection That's of Jesus. It. That's mm -hmm. it. And even Josephus, the Jewish historian, refers to Jesus' disciples as saying that he had been risen yeah. from the dead. So it's an extra wow. biblical sources as well yeah. of Josephus, who was a Jewish writer, and he thought enough to put that in there that wow. Jesus did rise from the dead according to his followers. And it's significant because the power of the resurrection has power in our lives as well. You mentioned the disciples. And to me, that's the greatest proof. I mean, that this, these men who had followed Jesus, but then ran and hid when trouble started, now after the resurrection, after that encounter with Christ, they were so shaken by the risen Savior 
that they gave their lives. They did. They gave, literally, spread the gospel, went throughout the world spreading the gospel, and then, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. they died horrible deaths. Mm -hmm. They did. There's no way you would do that for a lie. There's not. I find it so amazing because this whole book has been about resurrection. Mm -hmm. Resurrection one day when we meet Jesus, mm -hmm. but also resurrection now and, and the power that God wants to work in us, to bring us out of our tombs. So why is it that Jesus' resurrection is so important to our faith? Well, according to Paul, the thing that was brought into the world by Adam was death. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we can't conquer yeah, on our true. own. And so Jesus, by walking out of a tomb, conquered death. Yeah. Therefore, we both also have hope that we too can be resurrected from Amen. the dead. And that is our hope. It is God's vindication and the proof that yes. Jesus is the Messiah, yes. that he walked out of a tomb. You know, I always think of that time, you know, when, when, uh, when Jesus is put into the grave and Satan must just have thought he won. He must have been throwing a party saying, we have conquered. But then three days pass and all of a sudden the tomb opens and all of hell is just shaken to its core. You were telling me about a picture that kind of shows what Jesus did when the scripture tells us that he went, he literally went to hell and took the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, there is a picture in Capernaum on the Greek Orthodox side in my favorite church in all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And painted on the ceiling is an icon. And icons were told in their day to tell a story because the people were illiterate. Mm -hmm. It's like our modern day flannel graph. <laughs> there you go. And this icon shows Jesus holding on to Adam and Eve by their arms and tearing them out of the tomb and keys are falling around mm -hmm. them. So there is no more death. Resurrection has oh. happened and Jesus tore them out of the grave. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Just like he's doing for you and for me. That's, he's still opening graves. I love that about our Lord. Amy, thank you so much for being our guest thank during you. these Israel moments. It's been so rich and so sweet. And I know we've just scratched the surface. So maybe one day we'll get a chance to just dig a little bit deeper because I love your heart for the Lord and I love your heart for the land of Israel. Thank you, I love you too. He's alive. That's the message that Mary Magdalene, John and Peter, as well as countless millions have carried around the world. It's the centerpiece of the gospel, the foundational truth of our faith. For the resurrected Jesus made everything that we enjoy possible. And because he lives, you and I can live also.